Hey, what's going on YouTube? Will here from All Electric back again with another video and this is the 12th Curvy Country Road Test running 2019.40.50.7. That means this is the 12th software version that I've run this same test on. If you haven't seen any of the other tests, I've compiled them all in a playlist so you can go over to my channel or I'll leave a card up in the corner right here so you can go check out all those other tests. Really cool to see how it's progressed over all these software updates and how well it's handling this road. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this test, the first section of this road is pretty easy for the autopilot. Not easy in general, but the curves are less severe. Like you can see here, we are curving to the left here, but it is not a tight curve like you would see on sort of a backcountry road necessarily. Now we're gonna curve to the right here, but again, a long bending curve to the right and the autopilot's able to maintain that center lane position very easily. Later on in the test, and I encourage you to stay tuned for that, you will see how difficult this road does get. You're gonna see in several other tests, if you go watch them, that I did have to take over multiple times. So we're gonna see if this software version is able to complete the test all the way through without any takeovers. So we have a difficult intersection coming up here, and it is difficult and I've had to take over a couple times because there is turning traffic in front of us. So the oncoming traffic is gonna turn in front of us, but there is no traffic there. So we were able to cruise right through this intersection with no problems. Even with the limited lane markings, autopilot's still able to maintain that center position. Another long bending curve to the right before it straightens out. And I will say that it is doing a great job and is really easy for autopilot to maintain that center lane position. Not to mention, it helps when a car is in front of you. I found that autopilot does perform a lot better in general when it is following another vehicle. It kind of uses that other vehicle as a reference point to know that it's going in the correct direction. So you can see here, the autopilot is going to detect that speed limit sign and start to slow down as we pass through this smaller town here. One thing I would like to see is that autopilot starts to slow the car down before the actual speed limit sign. That way the car is going the correct speed once you reach that speed limit sign. So we're coming up here, there is a little fork in the road and we need to veer to the right here. And I've tried many times to turn on the turn signal, but the autopilot isn't able to detect that and so it won't take that lane over. And many of you guys have said, oh, if it was navigate on autopilot, then it would take this change, but navigating autopilot is only available for highways. So we're gonna re-engage autopilot here, and now we are back on autopilot. Our red model three was featured in our software update video and actually shows this railroad crossing sign because of the FSD visualization preview that was in the last software update. Now the white model three that you see in this video only has autopilot hardware 2.5. Now we are slated to get the 3.0 upgrade whenever they start doing that at our local service center. But because we are limited to the 2.5 computer, we don't get any of that visualization in this car. I'm really interested to see how this railroad crossing does once we get the 3.0 computer in this car, which hopefully happens sooner rather than later. So as you can see, we're passing through this smaller town and it does pick up some of the cars here on the side of the road, not to mention it is following the car in front of us. I have seen it before where the car autopilot will actually pick up one of these parked cars on the side if they're parked poorly and try to follow that car instead of the car in front of us, this maroon van. So now here is the hardest section of the test. We're gonna engage autopilot here and we're gonna go around this really sharp curve. You can see right here, we are actually over the double yellow line. I look ahead and I see traffic, so I do take over. I know that happened really fast, so let's take another peek at it. My thought is the gap in the double yellow line plus the severe curve caused the autopilot to drift over into the oncoming traffic and we did have another car, so I did have to take over. So our first curve is a fail, I did have to take over and we have another curve coming up right here. And right there, you can see that the autopilot was almost going to steer towards that guardrail. So here's another slow-mo look at it. And you can see the car just started to lose that center lane position. Now, I'm always keeping my hands firmly on the wheel, just like Tessa recommends, and I do not suggest that you guys try this. Autopilot has been re-engaged, and we have a sweeping 
left hand turn followed by a sweeping right hand turn but I want to draw your attention to the speedometer. Take a look. Right now we are at 40 miles per hour, but as we approach this turn, autopilot is slowing all the way down before the turn to 32 miles an hour, going down now to 31 miles per hour after the turn. That is what we want to see. We want to see autopilot slowing down prior to the turn. This allows autopilot plenty of time and space to maintain that center lane position around the curve. So it does slow down just a little bit here, down to 36, 35 miles per hour on that slight bend to the right. And we are now following a vehicle, which I said previously in the video, does help autopilot a little bit. So we'll see if that does help the autopilot overcome some of these really difficult curves that we do have coming up. A left turn is coming up here and we are following a vehicle so it is a little bit easier in the car to maintain that center lane position but now we have the most difficult intersection coming up. So you can see the car is going to turn right at this intersection so slowing the autopilot down drastically but also confusing the autopilot because right after the car turned you can see right there the autopilot wants to turn in the direction that the car turned and my tension on the steering wheel took the car out of autopilot. So another fail here. So, so far, this software version is not doing too well on our test and we've seen previous software versions that actually performed a little bit better. A big sweeping right-hand turn coming up here. We see no slowdown from the autopilot. It's still maintaining that 40 miles per hour speed now a long downhill straightaway, and it is maintaining that 40 mile per hour speed, and I'm getting a couple warnings saying that auto steer is restricted to five miles per hour over the posted speed limit. Now we do have a left turn coming up here, and it is a blind left turn because it's downhill, so it makes it impossible for the autopilot camera to fully see the road, but let's see how it does perform. In previous tests, we did have the autopilot slow down quite drastically before this next upcoming curve to the right. So let's see if this software version is actually gonna do that. Our last hill here before we go down and to the right, and we are still maintaining that 40 miles per hour speed. So I would like to see the autopilot slow down before it approaches this curve, but you can see here, it doesn't slow down at all. It just maintained that 40 miles per hour speed throughout the entire curve. Another curve coming up here to the left and we do have autopilot maintaining that speed going into the turn and then slowing down just a little bit going to 39, 38 miles per hour during or at the end of the turn. I would like to see it go into the turn at a slower speed and that really helps the autopilot be successful and me not have to take over. So we do have another really severe left blind turn coming up and I do have to disengage autopilot. Look at the speed, I'm still going 40 miles per hour and the car did not slow down prior to the turn. Now it's up to 41 and it did pass over that white hand line getting way too close to the other road for me, so I did disengage. So we re-engage autopilot before our next turn and again, it does not slow down at all. We're still going 40 approaching this blind right turn until after the fact, then it slows down to 33. So leave me a comment down below. Do you think that it slowed down because of the hill or do you think it was trying to slow down because it then identified mid-turn that it was in a turn and trying to slow down? So definitely let me know what you think in the comment section below. Our last turn coming up in this test and we do have a car and it does slow down prior to the curve but I do have to disengage although it did slow down to 32. I'm not sure if that was me being too harsh on the system. But regardless, in this 12th Curvy Country Road Test, we did have the most disengagements, I think, of all the tests. This particular software version even required takeovers when it, the car was going really slow. Let me know what you think of this test and definitely go check out the Curvy Country Road playlist. I wanna give a big thank you to all of you that are supporting me over on Patreon. You can show your support for as little as a dollar a month and for $4 a month, you get YouTube early access. For the all electric tier, you get early access and you get a shout out at the end of all of my videos. The all electric supporters I have right now are Grandma Tool and Nicola Pro. Thank you guys so much and thank you so much to all of my other patrons. 
If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so yet, consider subscribing and make sure you share this video with a friend. As always, I will see you guys in the next one.